The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Here's what independent tobacco experts say about the fine tobacco bought by the makers of Lucky Strike. Believe me, that tobacco is ripe, smooth, and mild. Tobacco you just can't beat for real smoking quality. Garland Tilly, 25 years an independent tobacco buyer, said that. Fine, mellow tobacco that tastes good and smokes good. I smoked Lucky's for 29 years. Dewey Huffines, top flight tobacco auctioneer, said that. Yes, season after season, at auction after auction, the independent tobacco experts can see the makers of Lucky Strike by that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. So for your own real deep down smoking enjoyment, remember... L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully fat, so free and easy on the draw. The Lucky Strike Program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, next Sunday, immediately after the broadcast, Jack Benny and his gang leave for the East to fulfill vaudeville engagements in Chicago and New York. So let's go out to Beverly Hills where we find Mary and Rochester helping Jack prepare for the big event. Gosh, Mary, isn't it exciting? Next Sunday we'll be on that train. A few days later we'll be on the stage at the Chicago Theater. You know, Jack, playing vaudeville is going to be a lot different from radio. You said it. I brought a couple of dresses over so you can tell me which one you think will look best. Good. Here. How do you like this one? Well, I don't know. It doesn't look bad, and I like the puff sleeves, but I think the neck is cut much too low. That's the back. Oh. So hard to tell when it's empty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see the other dress, Mary. Okay. Uh, how about this one? It has a rainbow sash, a peekable waist, and... I... No, no, don't bother, Mary. I've changed my mind. I'll wear a tuxedo. <laughs> I mean, that stuff doesn't get laughs anymore, you know? But you know, Mary, it's going to be fun getting back on the stage again. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Did you hear what Fred Allen said about you last week? No, no, Mary. What did he say? Well, he said... <laughs> He said that? <laughs> what? Well, not only that, Jack. He what? said that you killed Vaudeville. Now you're returning to the scene of the crime. Certainly I killed Vaudeville. After the way Alan made it suffer, what I did was an act of mercy. <laughs> Alan, Alan. Thinks he's so smart since they made him a vice president. <laughs> Anyway, in spite of what Alan says, when we get to Chicago Theater, we're going to have a terrific show. Uh, which reminds me, Rochester, did you buy the new strings for my violin like I told you to? Uh-huh. I couldn't decide whether to get you the wire strings or the gut strings. Well, why didn't you ask the man? I did, and he said, take shoelaces. Nobody will know the difference. <laughs> Well, that's ridiculous. I mean, how can I get music out of laces? You can play Shoo Shoo Baby by Forshine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Livy, paint your eyes red. You're another Phil Harris. <laughs> Mary, stop clowning. I got to think about the show I'm going to do in Chicago. Gee, it's going to be sensational. I can just see it now. The band plays. Da 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 Mary, I can't bend down any further. Let's tie his hand behind his back and put a dollar bill on the floor. <laughs> well, never mind, Jack. You can practice bowing later. Straighten up now. Okay. <clears throat> Ooh. 
Gee, it isn't like it used to be in vaudeville. I... Gee, I can't straighten up. I, I mean, I can't stay bent over like this. Rochester, don't stand there. Do something. I'm thinking, boss. I'm thinking. I got it. What? As long as you're in that position, let's go upstairs and bring down the trunk. <laughs> Cut that out. Mary, this is all your fault. There, I'm all right now. Come in. Hello, everybody. Hello, Dennis. Hello, kid. Hey, you should have been here a couple of seconds ago, Dennis. I was bent over and I couldn't straighten up. Gee, that happened to my father once. He bent down to lift something and he couldn't stra- straighten up again. Well, what, 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 what did he do? <laughs> or what did well, you well, do, well, rather? Well, huh? well, well, my mother tied his head to the radiator and his feet to the bed. Yeah? And then she took her arms and pushed down on him and pushed and pushed... When all of a sudden, boing! Gee. Vertebrae flew in all directions. Well, look, kid, I'm getting ready to do a stage show, and I want to get my act in shape. Have you got any ideas? Well, last summer I wanted to give my voice a rest, so I formed an adagio act, and I went on the road. Dennis, you did an adagio act? Yeah, but I had to give it up. Well, you weren't strong enough, huh? Oh, I was plenty strong. I'd take the girl, whirl her around my head, and then throw her. The first time she broke her arm... Then she broke her leg, and then she broke her nose. I felt awful about it. Well, that doesn't sound like your fault, Dennis. Maybe when you threw her, the other fellow didn't catch her right. Oh, other fellow. (laughs) Mary, stop looking at him like that. He's only a kid. (laughs) Say, Jack. What? Rochester is so anxious to go on the stage with you. Why don't you let him do a song? Hey, that might be a pretty good idea. How about it, Rochester? Oh, boss, forget it. No, no, Rochester, don't be bashful. Now, come on. I mean, you might be swell on the stage. Let's hear you sing a song. Maybe we can put it in the show, huh? Okay. Go ahead. What's come with me to Alabama? Let's go see my little man. That's what I like about songs. There you make no, 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 not that number, Rochester. No, there's a never shame. Oh, Rochester, not that number. Take you that's what I like. Rochester, song. that's Phil's Did song. you hear the place go? You know what it is? Rochester, Rochester now, look, now, wait a minute. 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 Wait a minute.
Very good, Dennis. That's a nice song. Say, boss, don't you think there's a place for me to sing a song on your stage show? No, no, Rochester. When we're in the theater, I want you to do just the part I gave you. Have you been rehearsing it? Yeah, all week. Well, let's hear it. Peanuts, popcorn, and candy. <laughs> Peanuts, popcorn, and walkie, and peanuts. <laughs> Very good, Rochester. Very good. Remember what I told you. Never change a $5 bill unless you take it out to the light. You know? <laughs> Benny, what are you going to do on the show? Oh, I'm going to do everything, kid. You know, master of ceremonies, a solo on the violin. And for the first time in my career, I'm going to do a tap dance. One of those old-fashioned tap dances where you put sand on the floor. Oh, Jack, that's corny. It is not. Rochester, where's that little box of sand? There, there. Now, dump it on the floor. Yes, sir. Now, I'll practice my tap dance. Dennis, uh, help me out by humming Swanee River, will you? Oh, okay. Da 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 dee da da dee da da da. Fred Astaire should see me. Da 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 dee da da. Come in. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, kid. Phil, come on in here. Yeah, what are you doing, Jackson? Kind of looking over some of the old routines, huh? So we can. <laughs> Holy smoke! Who put that sand on the floor? <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Phil. Let us help you out. No, no, Jackson. Phil, let us pick you up. It won't be the first time. <laughs> Come on. Leave me alone. I'll do it myself. The last time somebody helped me up, they bumped my head on the curb. <laughs> oh, all right. Have it your own way. Anyway, I'm busy rehearsing for the show, you know. Say, Jack, when do we arrive in Chicago? Watch for the day, the 7th of May. And our show opens at the Chicago Theater on the 9th. Now, Phil, Phil, have you thought about your act for the stage show? Don't worry about me, Jackson. Don't worry. After the dull stuff you're going to do, I'll walk out and throw that Harris smile on them and melt the butter on their popcorn. <laughs> huh? And then I'll hit them with 30 or 40 courses of That's What I Like About the South. 30 or 40 courses? Well, I haven't got time to give it all to them. <laughs> Bill, you wouldn't have the nerve to walk out in front of an audience and sing that song. He wouldn't, eh? What about the time he went to Tommy Manville's wedding and sang Thanks for the Memory? <laughs> I guess you're right, Mary. You can say what you like, Libby, but I know what I'm doing. As a matter of fact, when I play a theater, I make them take the bulbs out of the marquee and put my picture up there. Your picture? Why don't you let them put your name up there? I don't trust nobody. How do I know what they're spelling? <laughs> Oh, yes, yes. I never thought of that. No, something, Jackson. I got to get that billing that I deserve. I'm a great comedian. Oh, fine. Some great comedian. He's got two shows on NBC, and he hasn't been cut off the air once. <laughs> you know, I need you like a moose needs a hat rack. <laughs> I can't understand why that didn't get a laugh. Three weeks I've been doing it. It's never gotten away. Norman Krasner loved it. I... Anyway, kids, it'll be a lot of fun going to... be a lot of fun going to Chicago, New York, but I'm going to miss the gang here in Beverly Hills. You know, all my friends and the, the Ronald Coleman's next door. Incidentally, they're coming to our broadcast today. I sent them two tickets. You. I'm here in the library, Benita. Oh, there you are. What are you doing? I'm just reading. Ah, this is marvelous. Just wonderful. And so true, too. Oh, put away those reviews on the late George Apley. <laughs> All right, darling, but, but I haven't read them yet today. <laughs> oh, darling, I meant to tell you, Mr. Benny was over, and he left a pair of tickets for us for his broadcast. Look, I wouldn't go to Benny's broadcast if I were the guest star. <laughs> By the way, when did he leave the tickets? When he borrowed your full dress suit. <laughs> My full dress suit? When will that man stop? Next thing we know, he'll be wanting to borrow our piano. Oh, Ronnie, look in the living room. <laughs> no, no, this is too much. That man drives me mad. If he hadn't borrowed my razor, I'd go upstairs and cut my throat. <laughs> oh, no, please don't. He's got our band-aids, too. <laughs> Uh, 
How do you like that? Well, well, <laughs> calm down, calm down. We will have a bit of a vacation soon. Mr. Benny's going away on a vaudeville tour. Vaudeville tour? Well, what in the world could Benny do on the stage? <laughs> Play the violin, I suppose. But you mean that, that people will pay money to hear Benny play the violin? <laughs> yes. Huh. Say, Benita, let's you and I go out and join Spike Jones. <laughs> Don't be so silly. Oh, darling, pass me an apple, will you? I feel a bit hungry. Here you are. Thank you. You know, in his vaudeville act, Mr. Benny will have Manchester and also Mr. Harris. Uh, Phil Harris? Uh-huh. Benita, have you ever seen any of Phil Harris's musicians? <laughs> Please, Ronnie, I'm eating. experiences since we moved here. Can you remember the, remember the afternoon when we thought there was an eclipse and then we found that Don Wilson had walked between our house and the sun? <laughs> <laughs> what strange people. Oh, and darling, I meant to ask you about Dennis Day. Is he really Irish? Irish? <laughs> he thinks that when you die, you go to Gluckamora and Barry Fitzgerald lets you in. <laughs> one normal person in the whole crew. There is? Yes. Well, haven't you ever noticed Mary Livingston? <laughs> <laughs> well, my dear, you, you've got to admit that Miss Livingston is pretty, and when she stands alongside of one of the... I'll get it. Hello? Oh, Jack Benny, we, we were just talking about you. Yes, I, I know we have tickets to your broadcast today, but I'm afraid we were... Yeah, I realize that, Jack, but I... I... I know, Jack, but... 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 But, well, well, well that's all very well, J Jack, but it just so happens that today we thought we'd stay at home. Well, Ronnie, you know I hate to brag, but all of my programs have been very good, and today's going to be one of the best, and you're lucky to be able to get some tickets because it's very hard to get. If you don't want them, there'll be plenty of other customers. I mean, people will be glad to use the tickets, so I won't take no for an answer, Ronnie. I'll even drive you down my car. to be ready in five minutes. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, kids, we're going to have some very famous people in our audience today, Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman, and they insist that I drive them to the studio. Rochester, get the car ready. Don't you want me to shave you first? No, no, I've already shaved. How come so early, boss? Well, now that daylight saving time is here, I get my five o'clock shadow at four. <laughs> now, look, kids, today, let's try to do the best show we ever oh, had. Oh, Jack, stop worrying. Don. Don, what are you doing here? My quartet, too. Aren't you, aren't you supposed to be down at the studio rehearsing? Why, yes, Jack, but we've got an idea for your stage show that I think will be wonderful, won't it, fellas? <laughs> you mean for the quartet? Yes. You remember that old song, Chloe? You mean they have an arrangement of Chloe? Well, come on, Don, let's hear it. All right, take it, boys. Night shades fall and hear him sigh. Lucky's. Lucky's. Round and firm, and what is more, free and easy on the draw.
was fine, Dal. We'll try and use it in our show. Well, kids, we better be, we better get going to the studio now. I gotta pick up the Coleman. Well, I can take the sportsman and Dennis in my car. Good, good. Mary, you come with me. Jack, Jack, please hurry. Benita and I are waiting. <laughs> Oh, Ronnie, I'll be right... Dennis, stop that! <laughs> now, let's get going. Come on, Rochester, get the car. Now, Benita, riding in this car is the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> I know how you feel. Look at all that dirt on the floor. I don't mind the dirt, but the weeds are so high. <laughs> Do you want to change places with me? I can't. My pants are caught on the springs. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm glad we're going down this side street so nobody sees us. Are you folks comfortable back there? Oh, I'm fine. Well, frankly, I find it a little drafty. Drafty? Well, we'll fix that. <laughs> Rochester, Rochester, stop the car and put up the curtain. Yes, sir. Oh, no, 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 don't, don't bother. It'll be all right. Are you comfortable, Jack? Sure, why? I thought you'd be a little cramped up there with the meter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop with that. Uh, say, Jack, is this an English car? An English car? Yeah, I noticed the steering wheel is on the right. Oh, no, no. It, it's just bent that way. <laughs> oh, I see an accident on Hollywood Boulevard. No, it's trouble on Mulholland Drive. <laughs> Rochester. Now, don't drive so fast because... Oh, look, look, there's Greer Garson. Hello, Greer. Look, she's waving at us. How are you, Greer? Goodbye, goodbye, Greer. Benita, you and Ronnie can sit up again. We've packed her. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Jack, do we have to go so fast? There's an awful wind back here. There is? Yes, uh, Benita. Lucky you brought your muff with you. My muff? Yes, right there on your arm. Uh, oh, yeah. Mr. Fenny, this must have blown off your head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, thanks, thanks. Uh, by the way, Jack... Is this car the Maxwell you used to talk so much about? No, no, Ronnie. During the war, I gave my Maxwell to the scrap drive. Oh, yes, and, and this is what they gave you in return? <laughs> well, no, no, you see... Rochester, there's a red light. I see it. <laughs> we made it, Ronnie. You can put your rabbit's foot away now. <laughs> You know, folks, I think oh, that... Mr. Benny, Mr. Benny, may I have your autograph, please? Why, certainly, of course. There you are. And you're Mary Livingston, aren't you? Yes, I am. And, oh, my goodness, this is a surprise. You are... Mr. and Mrs. Herman Schlagelmeyer. you were Roy Rogers. <laughs> Rochester, the light's green now. Yes, sir. Hurry, Rochester, start the car. We're holding up traffic. the motor. I wasn't... I wasn't frightened. I was thrown. <laughs> For goodness sake, Rochester, start the car. We're holding up everyone. I can't understand why it acts like this. I've, I've done everything for this motor. Have you had it vaccinated for whooping cough? <laughs> Rochester, try it again. <clears throat> hmm. 
Ronnie, Benita, would you mind getting out and helping us push? Get out and push! Mr. Benny, let me explain something to you. I didn't want to go to your broadcast. I didn't want to ride in your car. And as far as I'm concerned, hey, if darling, I never... look, we're stalled right in front of Rama's Chinese where they're showing the Lake George Ackley. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go! <laughs> hmm. Well, the least he could do is come back and pick up the door. Come on, Mary, let's push. <laughs> We'll be back in just a moment, but first, here's Basil Rysdale. As you listen to the chant of the tobacco auctioneer, remember, LSMFT. American. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, and fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. So listen to the words of a man who really knows fine tobacco, Mr. Carl Hartfield of Greensburg, Kentucky, for 29 years an independent tobacco buyer. He said... At auction after auction, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine tobacco. Ripe, prime leaf. Tobacco that's got real smoking quality. I've smoked Lucky for over 28 years. Independent tobacco experts like Mr. Hartfield speak from their own experience. For over the years, they've seen the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Yes, you'll always find... L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And this fine Lucky Strike tobacco means real deep down smoking enjoyment for you. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. I want to take just a moment to tell all of our friends in Texas and New Orleans that we're leaving by plane tonight and we'll be with you in Galveston on Monday, Houston on Tuesday, and New Orleans on Wednesday to put on shows to raise money for the relief of the Texas City victims. I know you'll all give this your full support. Thank you very much. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.